Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United are reportedly set to make Paul Pogba the highest paid Premier League player of all time by offering him a new long term deal that would see him earn £400,000 a week. Pogba receives 290 grand a week at the moment. Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer. Before the start of the season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract. Earlier on in the season, it said Pogba is very likely to leave Man United on a free next summer. Now, last week, Paul Pogba's agent, Mino Riola, suggested that Pogba could return to Juventus from Man United on a free next summer. Mino Riola did mention that Turin is still in Paul Pogba's heart. Pogba endured four good years with Juventus before he rejoined Man United. Last week, Paul Pogba's brother, Matthias Pogba, said that Paul Pogba is yet to decide on his future. And he said his contract situation is up in the air. But like I say, I hope Paul Pogba signs a new long-term contract. He's enjoyed a good start to the Premier League season. He's already got seven assists. He played against West Ham yesterday. Made some good runs. Uh, seemed to have a minor injury. Pogba produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season. But at one point last season, he was out of a fire injury for a while. And he sustained some ankle injuries at Man United. Uh, Mino Riola has been working hard to get Pogba out of the club. He's done a lot of talking. He made an announcement back in December last year regarding Pogba. He said Pogba's career at Man United was over. He said he was unhappy and he had to leave. And he had no intentions of extending his contracts. This season is Paul Popper's sixth season at Man United since he rejoined. He's won three trophies at the club so far. He's our most expensive signing at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. We had him when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era but had to let him go due to limited appearances. There has been reports coming out saying that Barcelona want him on a free next summer. Earlier on in the season, it said PSG are pushing to sign him next summer. Um, it did say that Pogba is set to join PSG on a free. Was it back in August? It said PSG are prepared to offer Pogba £510,000 a week in wages to prize him away from Man United. Couldn't get him in this year's summer transfer window because they got Lionel Messi. And a few weeks ago, Defensa Central said that Pogba favours a switch to Real Madrid over the PSG deal. Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with Pogba. A couple of years ago, Pogba spoke about Real Madrid and his relationship with Zinedine Zidane. And he said he's seeking for a new challenge. <clears throat> now obviously you know the news on Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes is close to signing a new five year contract at Man United worth 250 thousand pounds a week 
Fabrizio Romano said the other week that talks have been ongoing since July between Manchester United and the agent of Bruno Fernandes over a new contract. At the moment, Fernandes is under contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. Bruno Fernandes wants to stay at Man United. He's made that clear. Uh, Fernandes obviously played yesterday against West Ham. Um, he was unlucky not to score because Fernandes hit the post. Fabianski tipped it onto the post. Fernandes played that crossing that led to Ronaldo's equalising goal. Uh, Fernandes scored a very good goal from 25 yards out against Newcastle. He's got his first Manchester United hat-trick in the 5-1 win against Leeds on the opening day. In most of his games at Man United, he's been very consistent, but there's also been quite a few games where he's looked off the pace. Bruno Fernandes has been at Manchester United now for almost two years. Last season, he won Player of the Year and he's won Player of the Month quite a few times. Reflecting on his good performances, we got Fernandes back in January 2020 from Sporting Lisbon. He's one of our best players and he's one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Now, Solskjaer is willing to sell up to seven players in January, including Anthony Martial and Donny van der Beek. Now, like I've said, Manchester United need to sell Anthony Martial because Martial isn't good enough to represent the club. Don't forget, Martial rejected the chance to join Leon on loan on deadline day. Before the start of the season, it said Solskjaer refuses to sell Anthony Martial as he remains part of his plans. Martial has been at Manchester United for six years. He's got three years left on his contract and he receives £200,000 a week. Martial has scored 78 goals for Man United in all competitions. We got him in a deal worth £58 million from Monaco. Back in 2015. Martial's had two good seasons at Man United. Uh, last season he was out with a knee injury for a while. <clears throat> and we certainly need to offload Donny van der Beek. Because he's not getting enough game time at Man United. You know, Donny van der Beek played no part yesterday against West Ham. He obviously started against Young Boys last Tuesday in the Champions League. But he got taken off. At half time, and like I mentioned, he shouldn't have been taken off at half time in that game because Van der Beek was our best player in the first half. Uh, Paul Lynch said that Donny Van der Beek has absolutely no chance of staying at Man United after being taken off against Young Boys at half time. Well, prior to that game, Solskjaer did mention that Van der Beek has been working hard to get into the team. And Solskjaer did say he's prepared to play Donny van der Beek in a two-man midfield. And Solskjaer hints at a new role for van der Beek this term. Uh, the other week, Donny van der Beek told Ole Gunnar Solskjaer his best position. Van der Beek reckons he will be best served operating as a number 6 or as a number 8. Don't forget, van der Beek spoke about his Man United future in an exclusive interview with Rio Ferdinand. And the, the other week, van der Beek's agent did a lot of talking. 
Don't forget Solskjaer rejected Van der Beek's exit because Everton were close to signing him on loan. This season is Van der Beek's second full season at Man United. You know, last season he made 36 appearances in all competitions, but most of them appearances came from the bench. I recall Van der Beek starting just four games in the league last season. I haven't really had much of a perception on Van der Beek at Man United, but he is a good player. We got him in a deal worth £40 million, with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United till 2025, and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Uh, Jesse Lingard, he could be on his way out in January. Uh, Jesse Lingard scored the winning goal against West Ham yesterday. He came off the bench. Uh, what a goal it was as well from Jesse Lingard. He deserves credit for that. Um, Jesse Lingard, when he came on yesterday, got a good reception from the West Ham fans. Obviously, Lingard was reuniting with West Ham last season. Lingard enjoyed a four-month loan spell with West Ham and made an impact. Now, prior to the game against West Ham, Solskjaer did say that Lingard will be a Man United player next season. We're looking to extend his contract. Lingard's current contract at Man United expires next year and... The other week it said Lingard rejected a new Man United contract offer over playing time concerns despite him being in the last year of his deal. Lingard has been part of the club for a long time. Uh, there's a good chance we're going to offload Phil Jones in January. Uh, Jones doesn't get in our 11 and he's always been inconsistent. Um, when the summer transfer window was open, it said Phil Jones is set to stay at Man United this season after Solskjaer told him he remains part of his plans. Jones made his comeback from injury in that behind closed doors game against Burnley earlier on in the season. This season he's filled Jones' 11th season at Man United. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. He's the only outfield player that's still with us from the Ferguson era. I think as well in January, there's a good chance we're going to offload Diego Delot. You know, Diego Delot is our second choice right back. You know, last season, Diego Delot was out on loan with AC Milan. Um, he's been with us now for like three years. Got him for £19 million from Porto. And he's got a contract with Man United till 2023. Um, Eric Bay, um, he, his name's been mentioned that he could be going in January. And Alex Tellez. Uh, there's a good chance he's going to leave in January because Alex Tellez doesn't get in our team. So there you go. Manchester United have got a title-winning squad. So the time for excuses is over. Well, a few weeks ago, Solskjaer told his Man United squad that it's better than the 1999 treble-winning team that Ole was part of. You know, we've got the best player in the world in Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, Ronaldo's done really well since he re-signed. You know, Ronaldo's got four goals in three games. You know, obviously scored yesterday against West Ham. Could have had more than one goal as well because he had some other chances without scoring. Uh, got brought down three times. You know, we had three penalty appeals turned down. 
Uh, Ronaldo scored against Young Boys in the Champions League last Tuesday and he scored twice against Newcastle on his second debut. We got Ronaldo in a deal worth 19.8 million with add-ons included. Ronaldo signed a two-year contract with Man United with an option of a third year. Uh, Ronaldo's already hinted that he's looking to stay at Man United beyond his current contract. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Old Trafford. And Ronaldo wears the number seven shirt. You know, Ronaldo is already the all-time record scorer in the Champions League and a few weeks ago he became the all-time international top scorer with two late goals against Ireland. And Ronaldo has over 780 goals for club and country. Uh, when Ronaldo returned, he gave a speech to his Man United teammates. He demands more f for his Man United teammates and he told his Man United teammates he wants the Premier League this season. Uh, prior to the Young Boys game, Ronaldo says we can win the Champions League and Solskjaer came out and said it's not impossible to leave Ronaldo out of the team. You know, Solskjaer said he, he doesn't have to play Ronaldo for every game. Uh, Jadon Sancho... He is a good player, but he hasn't enjoyed a good start to his Man United career. You know, sometimes it takes time for some players to settle in. And I said Sancho will do well at Man United, providing that Solskjaer uses him correctly. Sancho obviously didn't start yesterday against West Ham, but he came off the bench. We got Sancho in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. He's under contract with Man United till June 2026 as an option of a further year. Sancho to Man United was confirmed on the 23rd of July. Uh, Rafael Varane, you know, a very good centre-half. He's regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a great pedigree as a player. He won a lot of trophies at Real Madrid. Varane did enjoy 10 years with Real Madrid, so he was a long-serving player for them. Varane has enjoyed a very good start to his Man United career. Um, I thought Varane was good yesterday against West Ham. Um, looks very composed at the back. And made a very good block to deny Jared Bowen. Varane also played well in the game against Newcastle, which was his home debut. Um, he was unlucky not to score from that diving header against Newcastle, also defended well. And I thought he was very good against Wolves on his debut. We got Varane in a deal worth £41 million. With add-ons included, we paid like £34 million up front. Varane signed a four-year contract with Man United with an option of a fifth year. Varane got given the number 19 shirt, didn't he? Uh, Varane to Man United was official just before kick-off against Leeds on the opening day of the season. Harry Maguire, you know, he's a decent centre-half. You know, he's had his good games at Man United. He's also had his bad games. Like I've mentioned, we should get the best out of him now with Varane alongside him. Uh, Maguire wasn't too good, though, against West Ham yesterday. Obviously, he made a mistake in the first half, which could have been costly, but it wasn't costly. Maguire was a big miss for us towards the end of last season because he had ligament damage. In his ankle. I 
think this is Maguire's third season at Man United. We overpaid for him. We got him in a deal worth £80 million. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club. Eric Bailly, you know, he's a decent centre-half. But like I said, there's a good chance he's going to leave in January because he's going to find it hard to get into the team now. But you know what? I'd actually keep Bailly as a backup. So if Varane or Maguire get injured, then Bailly is the plan B. There's other centre-halves as well, such as Lindelof and Jones, but like I've said, I prefer by ahead of Lindelof and Jones. My element of concern about Bailly is injury prone. Towards the end of last season, Bailly signed a new contract with the club until 2024. There's an option of a further year. Uh, Luke Shaw, he's a very, very good left-back. I think Luke Shaw's enjoyed a pretty good start to this season. I thought it was Good against West Ham yesterday, uh, showed good attacking intent, provided width, got into decent positions. His crosses were good from set pieces. Uh, Luke Shaw, though, did give the penalty away in stoppage time. Obviously, it hit Luke Shaw's hand. Luke Shaw was superb last season. In fact, last season, he was the best left-back in the Premier League. We are in the process of extending Luke Shaw's contract. I think Shaw's just got under two years left on his current contract. Uh, Shaw has been our first choice left back for a while and he still remains our first choice left back despite the arrival of Telez. Shaw's had a good career at Man United despite the injuries he has sustained before. And he's been at Man United now for a good seven years so, so he's been a long serving player. And Wan Bissaka, I think, is a decent right back. He has had some poor games though so far this season. I think Am Wan Bissaka needs a rest. He played yesterday against West Ham. He did well in the first half, but then in the second half he was anonymous. I think that sending off against young boys has had an effect on Am Wan Bissaka. And Am Wan Bissaka. Could have gave away a penalty yesterday in the game against West Ham. Because I think he went in on Socek. So there's definitely aspects of Arn wan Bissaka's game that's got to improve. He's got to get forward more. He's He's got to be better from wide areas. His crossing's definitely got to improve as well. But I think defensively he's always been superb more or less. Despite what I've just said regarding Pesaka, I still think he's one of the best right-backs we've had since Gary Neville. You know, this is his third season at Man United. We got him in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019. <coughs> uh, David De Gea, very good goalkeeper. I think he's done well so far this season, you know. De Gea was in goal yesterday against West Ham. Obviously, made a match-winning save. Obviously, saved Mark Noble's penalty in stoppage time. And he made a good save with his feet to deny Jared Bowen. That's all that De Gea had to really do in the game. De Gea also made good saves against Southampton and Wolves. You know, this season is De Gea's 11th season at Man United. He's enjoyed 10 years at the club, so he's been along serving. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. Oh, De Gea has made mistakes in the last couple of years, and he's been heavily criticised for that. But a few years ago, De Gea was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. He's won everything domestically at the football club, and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. I think De Gea's got like two years left on his contract and he receives 375 grand a week.
Dean Henderson, you know, I think he's a decent goalkeeper. Uh, Henderson hasn't been in goal so far this season because he's been unavailable. Obviously, he had to recover from COVID-19. Henderson did well in a lot of the games he was in goal for last season. You know, his distribution was good and he kept a lot of clean sheets. Um, Henderson's got that experience behind him because he enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield. He's also had other loan spells before. And before the start of last season, Henderson signed a six-year contract with Man United. So, reflecting on that, he committed his future to the club. Scott McTominay, you know, he's a decent player as well. Uh, made his comeback yesterday, he started against West Ham. He's just come back from a groin injury. He had surgery on his groin. McTominay is still young, got a lot of development in him. He's been part of the club for a long time as it stands. Just after the first lockdown last year, he signed a five-year contract with Man United, McTominay. Uh, Paul Popper, he's obviously very good as well. Enjoyed a good start to this season. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, also very good. Uh, Mason Greenwood, he's good as well. He's enjoyed a good start to this season. Greenwood scored three goals so far this season. Uh, obviously started yesterday against West Ham and then obviously got taken off. Didn't play any part against young boys in the Champions League last Tuesday. Greenwood... Has been an absolute revelation since he broke into our senior squad. Greenwood made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven. And last season, he signed a four-year contract with Man United. He deserved a new contract, reflecting on his good performances. Greenwood's got a long-term future in Man United. Cavani, you know, he's made an impact since he's come in as well. Cavani's recently been absent. Uh, Cavani will probably leave at the end of this season. Marcus Rashford, he's also good when he wants to be. But he has enjoyed his bad periods at Man United. Rashford was out of form towards the end of last season. And he has become injury prone, which is a concern. Um, I'll recently give you the news on Rashford. Rashford recently looked sharp in training after shoulder injury operation. I think Rashford's expected to return in three weeks. Rashford seems to be more effective on the left than he is on the right and up top. So there you go. We have got a good squad. Um, on my next video, I will be giving you the preview for the Man United West Ham game in the EFL Cup third round. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you for today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.